Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We have been studying the subject, the law of spiritual authority. And then in that subject, we are studying the jurisdiction of our authority. Yesterday, we started talking about another area of the jurisdiction of our authority, and that is our authority over fear. Our authority over fear. Fear is something that has handicapped, inhibited, and held back many Christians from being who God called them to be, doing what God called them to do, and receiving all that God has for them. And it is something that we also need victory over in our lives. And as I go along, I will show you that actually every single person has some kind of a fear or has had some kind of fear that they will need to get victory over, but you get it, the victory over it through the word of God and through faith. And we need to um, get this victory. The Holy Spirit spoke to me before I went to the mission field and said something to me that I realized later was actually very important for me even to get to the mission field and then to be able to survive on the mission field. And that was a couple years before he sent me to the mission field. He said to me, you need to deal with your fears. You need, and in other words, get victory over your fears. And um, later on, I'll tell you a little bit more of that testimony and that um, victory over fear in a couple areas that the Lord led me in. But I want to start by the scriptural foundation for this. And the first thing is that we need to see that fear is under our authority because for one thing, we're going to see fear is an evil spirit. And number two, fear comes from the curse. It's, it's released. It is given opportunity by the curse. And we've already talked about, we have victory over, I mean, authority over demon spirits. Our jurisdiction of authority includes authority over demon spirits. And the jurisdiction of our authority includes authority over the curse. And so this will directly then um, lead us to authority over fear. And first of all, I want you to see that fear is an evil spirit. Being an evil spirit, it is under our authority, just as all demon spirits are under our authority. Let me show this to you in 2 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So in 2 Timothy 1 7, it does not just say God gave us, God has not given us fear. It says he has not given us a spirit of fear. So again, here we see that God calls fear a spirit. You know, some people think, and it's even been said that, well, a little bit of fear is good. A little bit of fear is healthy. Well, how can you say a little bit of a demon is healthy? A little bit of an evil spirit is healthy. How can a little bit of any demon be healthy or any evil spirit be healthy? It isn't. What they're thinking is that fear will keep you from doing wrong, but that is not the right way to keep from doing wrong. The right way to keep from doing wrong is to have wisdom. You know, some people even will teach their children to be afraid of something 
because they want them to be afraid of it and so that they don't do it or so that they don't get into it. They want them to be afraid of it. Well, guess what? You should never teach your children to be afraid of anything because fear is an evil spirit. The way to teach your children is with wisdom. Wisdom is the answer and you can have wisdom without fear. For example, if you're trying to teach your children to not run and play in the street because a car could hit them and run over them and smash them, you don't need to teach them to be afraid of a street and afraid of cars so that they run away from them in fear. No, you teach them wisdom. You teach them that that car is bigger than you and it could hurt you. So using wisdom, you stay out of the street, not using fear. Don't use fear to teach your children. Use wisdom and teach your children what wisdom is. Wisdom is the way to make right choices and right decisions, not by being led by fear. And we're going to get into that more later. I kind of jumped ahead right there, but that is so important. You know, people think that having fear of something is good in order to keep you from it or keep you out of it. Or, you know, that is all wrong thinking, wrong thinking, because it is not wisdom. Does God have any fear? Absolutely not. But is does he need to have some fear? No, because he has wisdom. Wisdom is the solution to making right choices and decisions, not fear and being fear-based and fear-led. You should never, 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 never be fear-based and fear-led in your decisions. Actually, as we're going to get into this, you're going to see being fear led will also often lead you in making wrong choices and wrong decisions because it's not wisdom. It's not wisdom. So anyway, I want you to see that a little bit of fear is not good for you. As some people might say, how can a little bit of a demon spirit be good? A little bit of this fornication spirit is good. A little bit of this adultery spirit is good. A little bit of murder spirit is good. A little bit of fear spirit is good. Wrong, wrong, wrong. All of it is from the kingdom of darkness. It is sin and leads you into sin and disobedience. And we're going to get there just um, in just a little bit. But this Scripture, 2 Timothy 1, 7, makes it very clear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And I looked that up in the Greek. The Greek actually does read that way. It's the Greek word pneuma or actually panuma, which is translated spirit in that verse in the Greek original language of the Bible of the New Testament. And so it is the spirit of fear. It is not a God-given spirit. It is an evil spirit. Why? Because God talks to us about the spirit of faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we read this yesterday and the day before. Uh, yes, a couple days ago. And in 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken with the same spirit of faith. We also believe and therefore speak. So we are going to get into this shortly, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. He gives us the spirit of faith. God has no fear. God has faith. Amen. And then also talking about the spirit of fear, Romans 8, 15 says it like this, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 
So here, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. It's relating fear to the spirit, evil spirit, spirit of darkness, spirit of bondage. That's what fear is, and that's what fear does. Fear is an evil spirit. And then here we see it is um, a spirit of bondage. It is a spirit of bondage and another translation says a slave to fear. So notice that fear is bondage. Fear is slavery. Also, again, in Hebrews chapter two, verse 15 It says the same thing again, and to free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So you see, fear is an evil spirit, and it's an evil spirit that holds you in bondage or slavery, slavery to fear. And then you are a slave to what you fear or who you fear. You became, you become a slave to the thing that you fear instead of ruling over it. You see, we're talking about authority and I'm jumping ahead here, but instead of ruling over it, you become subject to it. You become its servant or its slave. So fear is an evil spirit and fear is bondage or slavery. Fear puts you in slavery and bondage to what you fear. And then we see in first John four eighteen, it says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. So we see that fear is bondage. Fear is slavery. And now we see fear has torment. Fear has torment. Fear is tormenting. So anything that you fear or any fear you have, it is a torment to your spirit and soul. And so we are not supposed to be subject to fear, but we are supposed to rule in authority over fear. So we see fear is an evil spirit. And then I want you to see that. Fear also is a result of the curse and coming from the curse. In Romans 5.12, Romans 5.12, it says, Just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men. Because all sinned. Now we talked about this scripture when we talked about the curse. The curse is the law of sin and death that sin produces death. Sin produces death. As sin entered the world, death came through sin or by sin. So death is the result of sin. Well, then let's go back to Hebrews 2 again and verses 14 and 15. It says in verse 14, since the children have flesh and blood, he too, that's Jesus, also shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Then verse 15 And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So notice, first of all, that you need to be free from it. It, There is a freedom that is required or a deliverance that is required from fear. And This um, fear is slavery, and it says to free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear 
of death. So, what I want you to see is sin came, Romans 5, 12, sin entered the world and death by sin. So then we have the curse, sin, then death by sin, and then fear by death. Sin came and then death came by sin and then fear came by death. Fear is the result of death and the law of sin and death because it is fear of the curse. It is the fear of the results of the curse. So fear comes by the curse or the law of sin and death. Fear connects you with death because fear is the result of death. And therefore it connects you with death and then connects you to sin. Fear is then the root of all self-preservation. Fear is the root of all self-preservation. It's the, there is included in it the fear of loss, the fear of suffering, the fear of death, the fear of not enough, the fear of going without, the fear of hurt, the fear of pain. Well, then you can connect that to all kinds of fears and all kinds of phobias. There's being afraid of animals. Why? Because an animal could hurt you if it bites you or stings you or attacks you. There is the fear of heights because you could fall and be hurt. There is the fear of darkness. There is the fear of man. There is the fear of people. There is the fear of failure. There is the fear of lack and running out of money and not having enough to pay your bills. Which, by the way, let me stop and pause and say to you that worry is fear. People will use the word worry. I'm just worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about our finances or worried about paying our bills. But worry is just fear of not being able to pay the bills and wondering how are we going to do it? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So even though there's another term used, the term worry, it is not okay to worry. You know, there are many Christians who worry about everything. It is not okay because worry is also fear in the situation that you're worrying about the person you worry about. Maybe it's you're worried about your husband. You're worried about your children or you're worried about your grandchildren or you're worried over your finances or you're worried over this situation or that situation. It is worry is fear. And so we need to remember that included in this subject of fear is worry Also, and as I started to say, as I was saying, fear is the root of all self-preservation, which then it is self-preservation that causes selfishness. Selfishness is one of the very most root of all sins. Selfishness. Putting yourself first. And it is then self-preservation will be the root of addictions. Fear being the root of addictions. Whether it's a drinking addiction, drug, either illegal drugs or prescription drugs. Or smoking or cussing or other kinds of addictions are also rooted in fear, the fear of going without that. 
There's always fear connected to addiction because there is fear of being without what you are addicted to. Did you get me? There is always fear in connection to addictions because there is the fear of being without what it, you are addicted to. If you're addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs or addicted to nicotine and smoking or addicted to one thing or another, that addiction is a bondage in your life. It is a slavery in your life. And then there is the fear of being without it. You need to be free from fear and the fear will get you free from the addiction. Hallelujah. And we're going to go into more detail about how the how to is going to come. But then fear is also the root for lying. Why do people lie? Because they're afraid to tell the truth. They're afraid of the consequences of the truth. The truth is, yes, I did break that. I'm sorry. And I'm afraid to tell you that I did it because I'm afraid of the consequences. I'm afraid to tell you this thing about, about the situation or about me because I'm afraid of what you will think. You know, I'm afraid of what you'll think. I'm afraid of what you'll say. Well, there you are afraid. Fear then is the root for lying because you, a person will lie because they're afraid of the consequences of telling the truth. Fear is the root of cheating. It's the root of stealing. A person steals because they're afraid they cannot get what they're stealing any other way. They're afraid that if they don't steal it, they'll never have it. If they don't steal it, they'll never have the money to buy it. There'll be never any opportunity to get it on their own. The only way to get it is to steal it. And so it is fear that moves people to steal because they are afraid that they will not have that thing any other way. And so they just have to steal to get it. And so you see, therefore, fear is the root of most all sin, if not all sin. You know, if we could get free from fear, we probably wouldn't be in any more sin at all. Because love, and remember, Love is the opposite of selfishness. And then there again, selfishness is wanting something for yourself. And so why do you steal something? Because you want it for yourself. And you're afraid that if you don't steal it, you won't get it. Why do you um, do this or that or the other? It is all self-centeredness and what I need and what I want. And I've got to get it. And so I'll do anything to get it. So therefore, selfishness is the root of sin, of all sin. And then fear is the root of selfishness because fear is why is the cause for self-preservation. You're afraid that you can't get it any other way. And yet the Bible teaches us. Look at this again. We already read in first John four eighteen. It says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. So you see the the, the love is the opposite of the selfishness walking in love. And Jesus said, no greater love has any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Well, that is unselfishness. And it's not just lying down your, laying down your life in death and dying, but it's laying down your life by putting the other first, by preferring your brother, by preferring someone else. And you say, no, I won't take this when you take it. You have it. I'm not afraid about myself or what I need or what I want. I'll be taken care of. I trust God. God takes care of me. 
God loves me and I love you. So you have it. You do it. You take this one. And so love will never steal. Love will never lie. Love will always prefer the other person, someone else. And why? Love is not afraid. Love is not afraid. Not afraid that he will go without. Not afraid that he will suffer loss of anything, lose anything, come behind in anything. Because God is love. And you know God loves me. God loves you. And so you know God is your source for everything you need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so as we're going to see, fear is actually the fear that God is not going to take care of you. Wow. And as I want to just throw that in there, we're going to get into this in more detail tomorrow. But I want you to see fear is the root of all sin. Fear is the root of selfishness. It is the root of self-preservation. And therefore, it is the root of all kinds of sins. And therefore, it connects you to death and the curse. It connects you to sin and death and the curse. Well, we are running out of time right now. So join me again tomorrow. And today I bless you with peace and joy and love. The love of God should have brought in your heart in Jesus name. Join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.